Hello, my lovely Orthots. Welcome to another video. Yes, you heard right. It is not a live stream. It is a video. <laughs> Happy New Year's. I hope you had some lovely holidays and a great New Year's. Because we are in a new year, I think that it is a great idea to go back and look at all that we've done in 2022 so that we can wrap it up, summarize, and then those of you who maybe are not caught up or choose not to catch up or whatever it may be, because we have a lot of episodes, if you haven't noticed, about 300 or plus. So just for any of those reasons, this will be a good, like, way to summarize everything that we've done and because we've never done any other yearly wrap-ups this one will go all the way back and i'm talking like all the way to the start of our decades because i've never done one of these so i think it's a good way to just get it all done so that we can continue forward and set ourselves up for 2023 to continue going because we got a long way to go baby all right let's start from the beginning beginning so starting from the beginning like i said we have catherine and we have edward lightwood these were our starting point sims just a little bit of behind the scenes lore when i started the decades challenge i didn't want to do regular 1890s starting point decades challenge i was really really into the tudor time period i'd watch the other bowling girl and like i had basically fallen into a Tudor rabbit hole where like this was all I was consuming and I was so fascinating with the time period and like all the scandals that I just wanted to start during that time. I love the fashion as well. So that's why this was our starting point. Later on, this obviously changes if you know current decades. Things very quickly progressed for us and we started having a lot of kids, but also with decades comes a lot of death. Edward and Catherine had about, had 10 children, which is kind of a lot early on because nobody else matched that for us. Eventually, Edward and Catherine pass away. Edward of tuberculosis at age 35. And Catherine is taken by the Black Plague in 1563 at 27 years old. So we do move on. And eventually we get William and Millicent Lightwood. The year is now 1569 and Millicent has joined us. So another little behind the scenes tidbit about Millie is that she was actually really young when she married William. It was because I hadn't really nailed the concept of time age. I don't think so. So it was a, a bit of a hiccup when it comes to her age. Technically speaking, I just go back and change that if I want to. Um, but that's why she died so young. She didn't really get that far into this challenge. She eventually does die. And so due to childbirth, she dies pretty young in our save file. Lucky enough, she manages to have kids. Not all the survive but we do move on and have Avery Lightwood become our third gen heir in 1588 Avery is ready to get married, ready to propose. We meet Ruth. I will say, I don't really remember much about Ruth, but looking at our handy dandy spreadsheet, we do know that they end up having, this couple ends up having six children. Um, One of which brings on kind of a little bit of a debate in this generation, well, for the next generation, just because we have an untimely death and someone that was a supposed to be our heir, which was Bartholomew, that then gets transferred over to Ambrose, which I will explain in a bit. So in 1601, Ruth does end up passing away from an age up role. She rolls a bad roll, and we chalk it up to good old milk leg, which honestly, y'all should look that up. That's an, that's an interesting um, cause of death. Avery eventually passed away at age 44 in 1616. We chalk that up to syphilis. <laughs> so this is the first time we get an actual split in the family tree only because we have lineages that don't die off. They actually start to carry on where it's in the beginning. Everyone was kind of dying. So originally Bartholomew Lightwood was supposed to be our heir because he was the older twin. Bartholomew and Ambrose are twins. And they had set sail in 1620 uh, 
with the Puritans to go over to America. And we were setting them up to be our next in line. However, due to the brutal conditions in 1620 when they arrived in America, it was freezing. And we had to roll some very hard rolls. And not a lot of people survived. About half of our population died off on that first settlement, which was actually pretty accurate for, for history, like what actually happened in history. So a lot of our Sims died. There were no more male heirs to carry on in this, this line. So we had to move on to our next in line. And that's why we have our first transfer of airship. And that was Ambrose and Penelope Lightwood. Because of the whole transfer of power and like that kind of up in the air, will they, won't they, who will be heir situation, we didn't get to really spend a lot of time with Ambrose Lightwood and Penelope Lightwood. We kind of glossed over this fourth gen pair. So we kind of immediately jumped from this generation into the fifth generation with Edward and the second and Phyllis. They eventually joined the main house in 16. 33 and let's just say it was also very short lived because Phyllis died during childbirth sadly at age 29 in 1644 and Edward II apparently was poisoned don't remember who did it but he was poisoned and he died at age 30 only a year later leaving a lot of their kids orphans luckily at the time they still had some family members living now in what is now known as America so the kids weren't truly, truly on their own, but it left us up in the air for a while, for a long time, only having one male heir and not knowing if that child would survive to adulthood. Luckily, he did. And that was Gerard Lightwood, who eventually met Philippa Lightwood and they got married According to our spreadsheet in 1632, fun fact, this couple actually had a really hard time conceiving children. I believe they only ended up having they only ended up having five children in total. So another behind the scenes of all of that was actually that I had a mod. At the time, I think I had a mod that was conflicting with something and it was making it really hard for my Sims to end up pregnant if I didn't actively like cheat or make them try like a lot of times. But it was making it so hard. We played into it, made it part of the storyline. I didn't end up putting a little bit of a strain on their relationship for this couple, but that's why they only ended up having five children, which I think is one of the the lower end numbers. Obviously, William, Millicent take the cake for that one just because they died very early. Well, Millicent died very early on, but just like all heirs must do in our decades challenge, they eventually pass away, jarred from a work accident at age 15, 1687 and Philippa died at age 32 of measles in 1668. I noticed a lot of our moms die pretty young probably because they have the most to go through but yeah she kind of fell into that stat as well. Our next in line is Atkinson Lightwood who married Winter Lightwood in 1673 that the cutest little quaint ceremony. However, this was the first time our air mom outlived one of our actual main heirs. And Winter went through a lot. She like survived the witch trials. Atkinson died and passed away in 1705 at age 49 from dysentery. So we chalked it up too. Winter eventually down the line died in 1718 at age 61. Now, this is where we actually get into the 2022 wrap up. We've caught up to what we actually have done in 2022. Strap in, it's kind of wild. This is where we start to pivot into a lot of chaos. For eighth generation, we have Ambrose the Second Lightwood. Booze heard all around the world. Just kidding. And Joy Lightwood, which was one of our most dramatic pairings that we have had thus far. This relationship started off really rocky you know it was one of those shotgun wedding moments where uh, 
it was all lust and no real substance to this relationship. So Joy ended up pregnant very early on. Ambrose II had to get married at that point. And it was a downwards spiral from there. A lot of affairs, a lot of people leaving and abandoning family, <laughs> our main heir. So that was our first divorce we've ever had. And the first time we've ever had a mom kind of have to take over head of household, not because of a death of the partner, but because she was abandoned by her partner. Ambrose II died in 1717 at age 40 from gangrene. So maybe a little justice. And Joy Light would later died in a house fire in 1737 at age 59. Yeah. <laughs> Because of all the chaos we had just gone through, um, we were craving a lot of wholesomeness during this time. So moving on to our ninth generation, we have Jamie Lightwood who married Adeline Lightwood. And they were just the cutest couple. However, a little bit of a fun fact, Jamie was actually not our first in line to become the next heir, the ninth gen heir. Our next in line was actually supposed to be Lucian and we had propped him up to become the ninth gen heir. He'd gone all his schooling. We actually, he was the first sim of ours to go to school and we can afford school and to go to university. Lucian, who was supposed to be our actual heir, married Guinevere. And the first day of their ninth gen heirship, Guinevere died. She passed away. She was crushed by a cabinet that toppled over her. And because of that, we had to transfer over the airship to the next in line. And that was his younger brother, Jamie. And the rest is history. So Jamie and Adeline became our ninth gen heirs. They had a lot of children, a good amount of children. Adeline was murdered sadly in 1741. She died at age 43. Jamie's actually our oldest heir. I guess Winter's our oldest heir mom, but Jamie was at our actual oldest heir we've had thus far. He died of alcohol poisoning. His life was pretty wholesome for the most part, but not until his later years that his life turned a little dark. So he died at age 70 in 1769, which we eventually moved on to Seth Lightwood and Elu Lightwood. Seth and Elu married in 1744 in a nice little like backyard wedding in the fawn the farm. We part it all on into the night. It was a fun time. However, as cute as our wedding was, this was not the, the best of relationships we've had thus far. Eventually, Seth did end up cheating. He went to war. He never got to say his final goodbyes to Elu, and Elu never got to get any clarity. She died not really realizing everything that was happening. That was happening. And she never got an explanation. So I do find that kind of sad. She was just in the dark for a lot of things. And yeah, she was uh, also eventually murdered in 1760 at age 37. There's a lot of murders happening during this time. Seth died in the war, the Seven Years War, at age 39, 1763. So the kids were left orphaned, leaving the family kind of um, unstable broken so hence why we have had one of our most dramatic errors ever and that brings us to the yuma the yuma era our degenerate era as we like to call it yuma lightwood was, was quite the character might i add also one of our first queer heirs that we've had actually there's a little fun fact but yuma was very chaotic he eventually married daniela lightwood in 1767 she was an heiress with a lot of cash and a lot of dough so we really wanted in on that uh yuma just played up his charm we got married they ended up married and we took a lot of that money <laughs> And a lot of changes started happening around the farm at this point. So that kind of 
brings us up to date sort of to where we are trust me there's a lot more chaos behind the scenes yuma did end up passing not by a role not by story like the storyline took him down that road but by the game the end the game ended up electrocuting this man so in 1773 he was struck by lightning i don't know i guess we could call it karma because he had such an untimely death and not only that if all his uh promiscuity you just had a lot of love what can i say but uh it put a strain on his relationship with his, his wife they only ended up producing two children two two kids they're both boys so one of them will end up inheriting in the future because this brings us up to date and where we're currently at and this is also tidbit fun fact also an, our second heirs to uh, divorce and that is basically everything that has happened thus far if you missed very quickly before we head out actually i do want to mention that we did start our prequels ultimate decades challenge family that will eventually lead into what is our 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 lightwoods because i started in 1515 and my rules go all the way back to 1300 so i'm playing the span of the timeline that we didn't get to play from 1300s to 1550 and that will attach to where we started in 1550 on to where we are today so we start our prequels is only one generation deep so we're not too deep in it where you can uh watch back some of the videos and get caught up before we really start delving into this so that is also something that we started in 2022 i did want to mention that as well before we left who's to say what's going to happen in 2023 but i think this might end up being one of our craziest years especially for this next generation i don't know where it's going but i feel like it's gonna take us somewhere chaotic and i don't mind even more chaotic than than yuma's generation the 11th gen generation and that one was pretty pretty all over the place so i'm excited for the 12th generation here's to 2023 and all the shenanigans that we're gonna get into as you can see our family has grown quite a lot from the beginning as well so you do have other side storyline storylines to follow along with as well with that being said that is going to be uh, the wrap-up for 2022 and, and all the decades that we have done including all the past stuff so without further ado guys thank you so much for watching this video if you like it give it a like um here's to 2023 and finally ending the 1700s and moving on into the 1800s starting the 12th generation and all the new shenanigans that we will get to in the new year i'm excited so i'll see you all in the next video or in the or in the next live stream all right catch you very soon